Thank you for joining us, Mr. Soros. Pleasure. How do you judge the state of the world economy? Has the world recovered from the crisis of 2007, 2008? Well, certainly the financial markets have regained uh, their composure. So they're beginning to uh, function again. Um, and also, the, the, the world economy has overcome the shock that it has suffered because for a while everything froze and now it's sort of things are moving again. So there is a rebound. Uh, but I think that the effects of the crisis will be a long time uh, to, to, uh, for, for the world to absorb. And the main source of problem is in the United States because this is where consumers have spent more than they earned for a period of 25 years where we have accumulated a current account deficit that reached 6.5% at its peak, uh, which actually could have continued because there were uh, other countries, particularly China and the Asian Tigers, that were very happy to uh, run a continuous uh, surplus uh, and to finance our, our deficit. So that could have actually continued, but the households became over the indebted. And the, the U.S. consumer, that uh, accounts for 70 percent of the U.S. economy, has to uh, cut down. And that will take a, a while. And then also you've got the banking system that basically uh, was bankrupt, that it's uh, 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 at the bottom, it has to earn its way out of a hole. And it's, again, it's happening at a pretty fast clip because banks can borrow at zero. Uh, and uh, by government, 10-year government bonds yielding 3.5%. Uh, and that's a pretty fast rate of uh, earnings for no risk. Uh, so they'll earn their way out of a hole, but it will also take time. And then there's still uh, uh, the whole area of commercial real estate where the losses have not been recognized. So the source of weakness in the world will be mainly in, uh, in the U.S. consumer spending and in the, let's say, the decline in the uh, uh, banking sector. And is that weakness in the U.S. sufficiently grave that there could be a W-shaped recovery, that there could be another dip downwards? Yes. Well, I think certainly there could be another dip in the stock market because right now we are uh, sort of enjoying the confidence multiplier. Uh, and if, uh, uh, you know, there's a, a sort of a hope that this is a crisis like the previous ones and we will just sort of uh, recover in a V-shape uh, recovery. Uh, so when that hope is, is, is uh, uh, not fulfilled, I think that could Which you be, are certain it will not be fulfilled. Well, I don't, I, I can't see it being fulfilled. No, I'm, I may be wrong, I've been wrong before, um, but I just don't see uh, where the growth uh, in the U.S. economy uh, can come, come from. Given this continued weakness in the U.S. economy, are people right to start to be concerned about the dollar? Well, uh, they are, of course, uh, uh, and the dollar is a very weak currency except, except for all the others. Uh, so there is a general sort of lack of confidence in, in currencies and a move away from currencies into real assets. The, the, the Chinese are continuing to run a, a big uh, trade surplus and they're still accumulating assets and the, basically the renminbi is uh, permanently undervalued because it's tied to the dollar. Um, and um, uh, there, there is a diversification uh, from assets that normally held by central banks into other assets, especially 
uh, in the area of, of uh, uh, commodities. So there is a, a push uh, in, in gold, there's a strength in, 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 in oil, uh, and that is in a way a flight from currencies. Is there going to be sort of a tipping point, a moment at which the dollar is fatally weakened, or does it just sort of carry on? Well, it's it's difficult. as long as you as 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 long as the renminbi is tied to the dollar, uh, I don't see how the de how the decline in the dollar uh, can go too far. Now, of course, to to some extent, it's very helpful because with the U.S. consumers saving more and spending less, exports can be a way for the U.S. economy to be balanced. So a, a, an orderly decline of the dollar is actually a, a desirable. Does it at some point need also to decline against the renminbi? Does there need to be some sort of a new global currency deal? Yes. No, I, I, I believe that basically the, 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 the system is broke and needs to be reconstituted. We cannot afford to have the, the kind of uh, chronic and mounting imbalances in, in uh, international uh, uh, finance. Uh, so you need a new currency system and actually uh, the special drawing rights uh, do give you the makings of, of a system. And I think it's, it's ill-considered uh, on the part of the United States to, to resist the uh, wider use of, uh, of special drawing rights. They could be very, very useful now uh, when you have a global shortfall of demand. You could actually create, internationally create uh, a currency uh, through a special drawing rights. And this is, the, uh, we've done it, we issued $250 billion, uh, and that's a very, very uh, useful step, except the, the um, uh, rich countries uh, don't actually need the additional reserves. So they, all they can do is put it in the shop window and say we've got that, that much extra, but they can't actually use it. Now, I think they, it could be used, it could be used to provide global public goods. Uh, the, the rich countries could uh, put their allocations in escrow. Uh, the problem is that there is a cost to using SDRs. Uh, it's a very small cost at the moment. It's only less than half a percent, but still is a cost. So somebody has to pay it. And I think we have actually the means to do it because the IMF has very large gold reserves and the, uh, kept in the books at a very low price. And it has been decided to use th that, uh, those gold reserves to the benefit of the least developed countries. So the, the, the IMF could actually pick up the cost of paying for the special drawing rights. Using its gold reserves. And, and, and in fact, it's being done. It's no, it hasn't been, it hasn't gotten any publicity. But I understand that uh, in Istanbul, a deal was signed uh, where I think the, uh, the UK and France uh, uh, actually transferred uh, $2 billion of their SDRs or $2 billion worth or $2 billion SDR worth or to, to um, uh, uh, the, the least developed countries. And the IMF picks up the cost. So it's a, it's a road that's already been used and it could be used on a larger scale. What sort of a financial deal should Obama be seeking to strike when he travels to China next month? No, I think this would be the time because you really need to bring China into the creation of a new uh, um, uh, world order, financial world order. Uh, they are kind of reluctant members of the IMF. They play along, but they don't make much of a contribution because it's not their uh, uh, not their institution, their share 
is, is not commensurate. Their voting rights are not commensurate to their weight. So I think you need a, a new world order that China has to be part of the process of creating it. And they have to buy in. They have to own it the same way as, let's say, the United States owns the Washington consensus, the current order. And, and I think this would be a more stable one where, where uh, uh, you would have a coordinated uh, policies. I think the makings of it are, are already there because the G20, in agreeing to peer reviews, effectively is moving in that direction. Do you think it's possible to persuade China to allow the renminbi to become stronger? I, I think that they would be, they, they, they have been agitating for it, so I would take them their, at, their, at their word and use the, the special drawing rights uh, uh, more, uh, more often uh, and uh, make the renminbi, even though it's not convertible, part of the SDR. In other words, it should be one of the currencies used in, in the, in the, in the, uh, in the uh, special drawing right uh, arrangement. And uh, that would bring them in. And that's possible even with the renminbi not being convertible? Yes, yes, yes. It, ha it has been uh, considered before, and I think the Brazilian real should be also part of it. I think that the uh, a number of currencies uh, which f uh, uh, constitute the basket uh, can be and should be increased. And what about the American concern that aiding and abetting this move away from the dollar as the world's reserve currency ultimately means a weakening of the U.S. economy? No, I think I think uh, that is. Uh, I mean, we did have great benefits uh, from it, but we have abused it, and I don't think we can continue abusing it anyhow. So it is not necessarily in our interest uh, to have the dollar as the sole uh, uh, world currency uh, because the, as the world economy grows, it needs additional currency. And if the dollar is that additional currency, it means that the U.S. has to have a chronic uh, uh, current account deficit. And that is not appropriate. So I think it's, it's, it's in our interest as well uh, to, uh, to reform the system. In, at least in the short term, though, isn't it very convenient for America that the rest of the world is underwriting American spending right now? Y yes, it is. It, but, they are, but the willingness to do so is greatly diminished. And I think that you will find that, that uh, effectively um, China will buy less and less uh, of the U.S. Uh, government bonds because it will have a smaller surplus with the United States because China will be diversifying. It will be lending to Brazil and, 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 and South Africa and, and other countries in order to, uh, to um, finance its exports to those countries. So I think this is a, a, a healthy, if painful, adjustment that the world has to go through. If America doesn't actively take part in this sort of renegotiation of global finance, what will happen? What's your nightmare scenario? Well, uh, uh, the, uh, the Chinese will go bilateral. They already do it. They already have a clearing uh, arrangement with Argentina, and I think they're working on one with Brazil and you will find that there will be more and more bilateral uh, arrangements. So the, the, the dollar will remain the main international currency, but its use will decline. So uh, uh, I think that a, a world of bilateral relations is less desirable than a a, a continuation of a multilateral system. But the, the, the system we have now has actually broken down, only we haven't uh, quite recognized it. And so you need to create a new one. And this is the time uh, to do it. 
In the United States, how worried are you about the budget deficit and maybe about the possibility of inflation? Well, uh, um, s certainly um, a decline in the value of the dollar is necessary in order uh, to uh, compensate for the fact that the U.S. economy will remain rather weak, will be a drag on the global economy. Uh, uh, China will emerge as the motor replacing the U.S. consumer. And, of course, it's a smaller motor because the Chinese economy is much smaller. So the world economy will have less of a motor. So it will move forward slower than it has in the last uh, 25 years. But China will be the, the, the engine driving it forward and the U.S. will be actually a, a drag that's being pulled along through a gradual decline in the value of the dollar. And domestically, what about inflation? Is that something that you're worried about? Well, it, 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 it could be if, they, if, if, uh, um, if the economy lending restarts and the balance sheet of the Federal Reserve is not shrunk uh, commensurately. But I think uh, uh, this is something that it's a delicate maneuver, but I think it can be done. Uh, and uh, so there would be a slow uh, um, decline in the value of the dollar, a managed uh, decline. And that would be the, the adjustment that it needs to be accomplished. Now, it could actually get out of hand. And certainly the fear of inflation will precede inflation itself. And actually the fear of inflation in, in the markets, let's say uh, driving up interest rates, uh, could then uh, um, forestall the inflation and push the economy back into a recession. So you would have a stop-go a kind of economy, which is similar to the 70s. And how worried are you about the Fed taking maybe a more hawkish position and raising interest rates possibly too soon? Who, the Fed? Yeah. Uh, it's unlikely to do it because, because they, they, they have the Japanese example in front of them and they see that the Japanese did it a few times and it has actually uh, uh, set them back. Uh, so there is a, uh, I mean, 25 years of excesses have to be worked off. And what about President Obama? Should he be more worried about budget deficits or more worried about the recovery fading away? I think he's, he is more concerned about the recovery fading away. He's concerned about the unemployment. And I think he's right uh, to, be, uh, to be concerned. Um, now, the, the trouble is that, that it seems that businesses are extremely cautious and even as you have some recovery, they don't actually hire. Uh, they, they, they actually are producing good profits uh, by cutting costs. And so you're going to have uh, uh, continued uh, unemployment.